Hello, this is a tutorial to show you how you can create quick PBR materials in moments just from one photograph. This first video will be just a quick guide and introducing the program called Materialize and shortly I'll do a full in-depth tutorial about how you can change all the settings and deal with any issues that you may have to get that perfect material. But for now a quick start guide. So this uses a PBR workflow. If you want to know more about PBR materials then click on the links in the corner or in the description. You can see the interface here, it's right click to move around and middle click to strafe with your object. You've got some settings and controls down here and you've got all your maps at the top. You start with the diffuse map, so we open it up, there's paste, copy, open and save. I'm going to go for open of course and I'll open this damaged concrete. Now it does work better if you have a square image, but I'm going to quickly show you, you can even take any sort of random image and bring it in. This is quite a low resolution image as you can see here. It's obviously going to be much better if you've got a high resolution image, but I'm going to show you the power of this by using a low resolution image that isn't square. So there's our image in and it looks fine, fairly flat at the moment. We can edit our maps here and there's lots of different things you can do here, but I'm just going to say set as diffuse but I'm not going to change anything as this is just a quick guide. My next guide will go through these in detail. So once you've got your diffuse in, that's when you can start creating other maps. The best one to start with is the height map. So we press create and it creates a height map based on the diffuse map. Now the important thing to remember with most of these maps is that they're using a black and white image and it's using that as a mask or a way of the image determining how much of the height is being affected. So when you use a black and white mask, when you have white in it, that means that it will have a lot of effect. So in this case, a lot of height. Black will have no effect. So it will have no height. And then gray will be partially in the middle. The way to remember that is that white is full of light and black is absence of light. So you've got to see this as a slider between zero and the black and white being one. And the gray is in between. You've got lots of different settings here. With a height map, they work in the same way as displacement maps do in Blender. It's kind of just another name for them. You generally want it to be slightly blurry. So when it says detailed, you'll see if I set this as the height map and then go to show full material here, you can see that using the right mouse button, it's very sharp. So let's go back to that by clicking on create again. You're better off changing to either displace or default. I'm going to go for default in this case and set height map. And now that will save over it. Once you've got your height map in, you can go to your normal map and you can press create there. Now normal maps are the only one that doesn't use black and white information and they tend to be for the finer details. The displacement map or the height map does bigger changes and they actually change your mesh. So you need a detailed mesh for them to work. Your normal map is changing the way the light interacts with the object. You can pretty much see the effects of the normal map here and how much detail it's going to give off. And this is quite nice. Again, you've got your default, smooth, crisp, and so on there. This time you can actually go for things like crisp. I think the default will work nicely in this case. So let's set that as the normal map and show full material again, see how we're getting on. And that's starting to look quite nice. The metallic map is if you have any metal in your scene. That can be quite tricky unless it's all metal or all dielectric, which is non-metal. But if you have something like a manhole cover, then you have to try and isolate it, which gets quite tough. And I'll go through that in the next tutorial. But for now, we can leave that blank or black in this case, because it's all dielectric. Therefore, there's no metal. The smoothness map is the same as a glossy map. So it's the opposite of roughness. Let's create one of those. Now, this looks quite good because it's close to black and we want a rough-ish texture for our rocks here. If you needed to invert it, the final contrast is the slider that will invert and that will help you. So that would be really shiny. This is rough. Again, you can mess about with all these sliders by yourself and see how you get on. Let's set that as smooth. The edge map is, as it says, finding the edges. Some game programs use that. I personally don't know much about them because I've never used an edge map, but you can quite clearly see what it creates. If we see down here, it will define the edges. If we set as map, go back to show full material, the edges are highlighted more, which is quite nice. The ambient occlusion is the sort of shadowy bits. So let's create a map for that. And you can increase the power or not there. It was looking pretty good as it was, so just a touch of ambient occlusion would be nice, just there. And set ambient occlusion map, show full material, and it's looking good there. You can see this in a cube, a cylinder, and it's looking quite nice. 
You have your saving options here, but before we do that, it's a good idea to tile the maps. So if we click on Tile Maps, it will take us back to our plane here. And let's tile it with two, as you can see there. We give it a bit of an edge fall off, and you can see it's slowly blurring them together where the seams are and making it a seamless texture. Very nice. You can adjust the location of this as well. Because my texture wasn't square, I can sort that out here, and you can see what that's going to look like with lots of tiling. There is going to be repetition, of course, but that's not bad. Lastly, you can set the output. I think PNG is a good one, lossless format. And you can set how big the texture size is going to be here. So it's actually going to increase the resolution of my texture. I'll save the project in a folder called Rock Test and call it Rock Test and select. So here's my folder and there's all my materials. So that was pretty quick. Make sure it works in Blender. You can see my different maps that I've got set up over here. The original material is in the middle. I've got a world HDRI and I've set this up with the principal shader. Also, I've set them up with displacement maps. So you will need to do that with the height map if you want this sort of detail on the edge. If you need to know more about that, then do look at my videos. I'll put a link in the description, but you can see it works for metallic maps. And this is actually a hand painted mud that I thought I'd give it a go with as well. It didn't work as well with that one. And there are slight limitations and you need to really experiment to get the best out of it. And I'll go through all the nuances of the program in the more detailed tutorial. So there we go. I hope that helps and thanks for watching.